The Charlotte Hornets play well over the weekend. They even pick up a victory. How many do we think they actually picked up? Brandon Miller bounces back strong, but LaMelo Ball's ankles not so much after missing some time on Saturday. We'll discuss all of it on Locked On Hornets. You are Locked On Hornets, your daily Charlotte Hornets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, in a minute, cuz we live. We live. We live. <laughs> It's Locked On Hornets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available anywhere you get your podcasts, and that includes YouTube. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and even faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. I'm Walker Mail. You can listen to me on WFNZ every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. There's Doug Branson back in the saddle, as he says, back in the office. And you can find his work on his Substack, stack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. But if you can watch us on YouTube, it's a much happier Doug. It's a clean shaven Doug. The stash is high and tight and he's not <laughs> singing fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. I have to imagine the ice has melted enough for you to get out of the house. Maybe the kiddo is at school and you're not watching any wiggles to start your day. Uh, that's true. All of that is true. Uh, the, well, the ice hasn't melted yet, but it is due to melt later today. But it has moved out of the way enough such that I was able to get back into the studio where I belong and I'm ready to talk Hornets. All right, Let's well, go. Fruit get- salad. Yummy, yummy. We got some decent basketball to talk about. Yeah, the the not so good news is the fact that we have a recurring ankle injury problem with LaMelo. That's been an issue. But let's just let's talk about the good before we move on to LaMelo in this segment, because they did get the win. This was the the win against uh, San Antonio on Friday was an offensive get right game for the starters. Like everybody goes off. Everybody gets a bucket. It's the first time they've scored 120 points in quite some time. I I think this is right. It's the most points they've scored. Like 112 was the mark they would get to. And and they got to a a 116 and a loss to Phoenix, I believe. So it's been a while since they got to 120. But the starters, they were shooting really well in this game. And so they win against the Spurs on Friday, 124 to 120. No Wimby. So whatever. But they get the win, and nobody's going to apologize for it. They did lose to Philly on Saturday, though, Doug. They did have their star. They did have Joel Embiid, who played well, as you might imagine. But they only lost 97-89. to Are we counting that as a moral victory? You asked, or you asked last week, can we just lose by single digits against these teams? Can we compete? Can we make it a game until we get to the fourth quarter and then the better team can start to separate themselves? Doug, you asked, and that's what you got against one of the best teams in the NBA in Philly. I don't think you can ask for much more than that. And I don't think don't that's think either. much more than Steve Clifford was asking for after the game was this team to compete hard. Look, you went up against a Philly team that w- that was starting Joel Embiid. And you didn't have either of your your starting center or your backup center, and you're not exactly you're not not exactly you're not deep at all at the center position because now you're starting PJ Washington. I wrote on Twitter, I'm going to start a GoFundMe for this guy because he's out there defending Joel Embiid best he can, and the defensive scheme was perfect. But here's the thing: you can have a perfect defensive scheme uh, against Joel Embiid. But it requires uh, two things. It requires a little bit of luck for it to work, shots not to go in, and it requires Joel Embiid to be selfish and not look for his teammates and walk right into the double teams, and he and he did just that. But you could have a perfect defensive scheme, but if you don't have the personnel, which the Hornets don't at the center position, you know you're you're still going to lose the game, and you still could have gotten blown out. I mean, this was a team, a healthier team, went up against Philly earlier in the season and lost by more than fifty points. Mm -hmm. The fact that you hold this team to single digits is, I mean, dare I say, a miracle. (laughs) I was going to say, did did you want to dub it the miracle after midnight, even though it wasn't after it it, it was late. It was late, but not after midnight. Yeah, it, it, it was damn near a miracle to me watching them get so close to this one. So it's funny you, you have in the phrasing of the rundown, we're sure they got one win. Mm -hmm. Are we sure they didn't get two? Well, like you, you could argue 
the bigger win was against Philly because San Antonio is bad. Even if they lost by 30 the week prior, San Antonio is still a bad basketball team. And that's with the seven foot four monstrosity that is Victor Wembanyama. And he wasn't in this game and they only won by four points, but at least the offense got going. Whereas against Philly, Joel Embiid was inefficient. That Philly was ice cold from three. They couldn't hit anything. They were five of like, what was it, 20, 25, something like that. So they couldn't hit anything from distance. And so that one felt like the better performance, at least defensively, even if you did get some three-point miss uh, shot luck for your squad. And so we'll take it any way we can get it. Um, the loss here, though, Doug, is the fact that LaMelo did not play against Philadelphia and which made it all the more impressive that Charlotte was able to hang around the way they did against 70s and against the 76ers. Mm -hmm. LaMelo doesn't play and he doesn't play due to ankle soreness. Just let me hear your thoughts. What are you thinking about LaMelo not playing in this one? C concerned? Obviously, um, this is a uh, right ankle soreness after a right ankle injury that kept him out for 15 games uh, that was preceded by him returning at the beginning of the season because of an ankle fracture last season that made him miss a significant amount of games. And prior to that, three more ankle injuries. So obviously, this is a concern for the team. It's a concern for LaMelo. I couldn't – I tried to go back and find – a particular play in that San Antonio game that I could identify and say, yep, that was the one I could see him turn his ankle. And maybe, you know, some keen eyed listeners or viewers can point me to a play because I really tried to go back several times and find it. The only thing I saw was there was a Euro that he tried to hit and there was like an awkward landing of the foot, but it wasn't a turn of the ankle. But obviously he was wincing a little bit after that play and then he was. He was obviously in pain and gutted gutted through it in that San Antonio game and then needed to take it off. And my question is, you know, does it even make sense the rest of the way to play him on a second night of a back-to-back? -back? Should, should they entertain the idea of doing some sort of protocol like Wimby is on where, you know, they're saying, look, you know, we're, we're going to – you cut some things off at the pass. You're not going to play second nights of back to backs. So you're going to get a little rest here and there. Should they entertain that idea? It's a it's a it's a divisive idea. Sitting sitting your star player at any point in the season. It should. What do you think be. about that? It shouldn't be. It should, <laughs> I don't know why it would be so divisive. Look, if if we live in reality, the Hornets are not playing for anything. They're not. So if LaMelo Ball, if it matters that that guy is as healthy as possible and you get his ankles as healthy as possible for the years that you hope to matter, they might not either. But we know this one doesn't in a sense of them competing for a play in tournament spot. I know the players talked about it. I know Terry talked about it with Rod Boone of the Charlotte Observer. Media Scrum is telling you we're only like five or six games out of the play in. I get it. If LaMelo sits out the second night of back-to-backs, and there is some real ankle soreness, then I I don't know why we would want him to play, right? I mean, we, we could just keep doing this, Doug. Like Maybe you just take it out of his hands. That's fine. And say, nope, you're not allowed to play. But also, how about we just do what we did here as a training staff? We evaluate what his ankle feels like. It's hurting. Probably shouldn't go. This just seems like something you should be extra cautious with. I, I just, yeah. I don't think there's any reason and to what you were questioning to throw him out there. If there is some soreness like, Oh, well, all right, we kind of need you. If we're going to have a chance to win against Philly. No, nah, man, go ahead and sit, rest that thing because it's all about the long game. And it's all about the big picture with your $200 million guy in a season that you're not going to win in the postseason. RTT rest that thing. Uh, I, I agree with you personally. I think, and I had this discussion with uh, our friend Rod uh, Morrow, uh, who's been on the show multiple times. We need to get him back and discuss this as well, because he's got some interesting thoughts that we could kind of dive deep into. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I posed that to him on Twitter, and you know, he said, I wonder about the human side of sitting guys versus playing. When you're talking about a young and up-and-coming player who has career goals, has milestones they'd like to reach one day, I wonder if they even want to sit if they can play. And I don't think there's a doubt in my mind that LaMelo does, wants to, he doesn't want to sit. He wants to play. I think it would have to be, I'm not really talking about my personal opinion that he should sit on second night of a back to back. I'm saying that should the team have the conversation with doctors, team doctors, his doctors, 
and look at this and go, hey, may, maybe for the rest of the season, let's figure out a plan where you can do both. You can strengthen the ankle because you got to play. You got to play through it. You got to you got to work that ankle back into you know game strength, and that only happens if you play games. You know, and, and this is assuming he's healthy enough to play right now. That this right ankle soreness isn't rooted in him coming back too early. Let's just assume he came back fine, and maybe just something happened in that San Antonio game that caused soreness. I'm sure he's got to work through that at some point. He's never going to be. 100% healthy and that ankle be 100% strength if he doesn't start to play through it. But there but maybe there's a conversation about how much pressure do we put on that ankle through the rest of this season and start looking towards getting that ankle 100% and stronger at the same time for next season. Well, yeah, and but but also that's kind of my point with what they're doing now. It seems like there is a nice compromise if this situation is happening behind closed doors, which I have no clue what's happening in the locker room, training room, whatever. But it seems like a pretty reasonable compromise. If Lamelo is chomping at the bit to play as much as he can, great. Dog in him. Excellent. Go get him when you're healthy. And so when you have three games that you've played back from injury and then you don't play on the second night of a back-to-back, that's okay. It does everything that you just talked about. It strengthens it strengthens your ankle. It doesn't put it in harm's way unnecessarily so. The ankle gets evaluated every week. It gets evaluated every day. It gets evaluated every game day. And if he's good to go, great, lace him up. But if he's not, then don't play him. Like To me, I don't think we need to make it as hard. I'm not saying you are or anybody is. I'm saying I don't think like we need to create this problem when all we really have to do is, hey, is, is your ankle hurt? Yeah, it hurts pretty bad today. Hmm, mm. second night of a back-to-back, mm. too. Yeah, this is somebody that's had a lot of ankle injuries in a row. My, my, doc, my professional opinion and my logical opinion says don't play. Think about no, no, no. It doesn't say don't play. No, it doesn't say don't play. It says RTT. Rest that thing. Yeah. I want to see second night of back to back. Lamelo DNP RTT. <laughs> yeah. What, what are we doing? Think about the story. What's worse, having Lamelo be frustrated because the training staff told you to sit out the fourth game after you played three or whatever it was after you came back, or that they let you play when it was hurting and then you risk a re injury. Which would is totally changed now. It would be different if you haven't re-injured this thing multiple times, but you have, so you can sit a game. And that's that's my opinion on all of it. Let's move on. We have a couple more segments to go coming up next on the Locked On Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. Somebody else that came back from injury. It's Brandon Miller. Man, did he look good this weekend? Two twenty-point performances against San Antonio and Philadelphia. We'll talk about his strong performance on Friday and Saturday coming up. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn, LinkedIn jobs at the start of the new year. Every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024. LinkedIn jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn also knows that small businesses are wearing so many different hats and might not have the time or resources sources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NBA. That's linkedin.com slash NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. More Lockdown Hornets coming up next. Doug, with all the injuries that we've experienced all year long, the soul for a soul, a a thing, a theme that Eric Collins isn't even safe from, a theme that Ashley Shamity isn't even safe from. Nobody is safe from the soul for a soul balancing of the scales on the injury refront. When we got Brandon Miller back and we got to see him play against San Antonio, man, did he look good there. 
going four of seven from three, eight of 14 from the field. That's a very Brandon Miller-esque game when he goes off, right? Nine rebounds, too, so that was nice seeing Brandon mix it up down low and got to the foul line, shot five free throw attempts in each of these games. Philadelphia, Brandon Miller goes for 23 points, eight of 17 shooting, but got his points a little bit differently here, right? Only two three-pointers made out of the 10 attempts that he took. But he was 8 of 17 from the field. So it was doing it inside the arc. Hit all five of his free throw attempts against Philly. Strong, strong weekend for the Alabama rookie that seems to be feeling better, Doug. Yeah, this seems to have rejuvenated him. And one wonders if the injury that he suffered you know, after the fall from Keldon Johnson in the first San Antonio game, like if that maybe just gave him a little bit of rest to avoid at least for rookie now yeah. the rookie wall, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's maybe maybe that's maybe that's a thing. But he man, he has played uh, so impressively to me. Uh, played without I think any fear in this game against Philly. I mean, he was taking. I mean, there was one play late where he took it right into Joel Embiid's chest. Uh, you know, for, uh, that's what you want to see out of your rookie. Sometimes it's not going to end well. You know, sometimes he dribbles into traffic without fear and it ends up being a turnover. Uh, but the more he does it, the more experience he gets. And um, I, I think it paid off in this game as he was driving effectively, scoring inside the arc. And and he was, you know, he's setting uh, career highs and rebounds. He's getting a lot more active in other areas because, you know, when, when so many guys were out, they looked to him ex- almost exclusively for scoring. And now that you're, you are getting a few guys back in the rotation that can take some of that scoring burden off, you, you're seeing him expand his game, open up a few of the other things that he can do, like pass, like rebound. But what you're seeing is just a versatile player, uh, and, and it's exciting to see. And then everything that I see, Walker, I look at and go, man, once this guy gets a body, it's just going to be scary because he's got the attitude, he's got the willingness to do all the things that you would expect a super wing to do, and he just needs the size and strength to go along with everything else that he has right now. Yeah, the, the shooting, it's fantastic. And that's keeping him on the court. And now, you know, when he is ready to go, we saw a little bit different to his game, right? I mean, like I said, you, you mentioned him driving right into the body of Joel Embiid. That's against a Philly team that has one of the best, def- not only just centers. Remember, what makes Joel Embiid so good is that he's one of the best defensive players in all of the NBA. And so that's what's impressive about him also getting to the foul line as much as he did over the course of the last couple of games. The shot making was great. Even if he, that that's what you want to see too, when he's not hitting his three point ball as well, the fact that he was still able to put points on the board in a way they needed it. No LaMelo against Philly and they didn't have a lot of offense. Brandon Miller provided you some offense. And so it was much needed. So it was nice to see him come back. It was, it was a rough go. We did the NBA rookie ladder thing ESPN released. And because of what was happening lately, Brandon just wasn't playing well flat out. But yeah, I mean that he reminded people of what kind of special talent that he could be. Yeah, and look, if you've been a sicko for a while, then I'm sure you you watched this Philly game and saw the starting lineup come out, and you saw that they were starting Nick Batum, you saw that they were starting Kelly Oubre, and you, and you, you got to go, wow, I mean, is this a troll job by Philly? They're just throwing all of these old Hornets demons at us to try to psych us out. And Brandon Miller in that third quarter, a third quarter that they would uh, take a lead I mean, they took a lead out of the third quarter into the fourth quarter. They lost that game because of fourth quarter execution, but but they went into the final frame with a lead. And a lot of that was Brandon Miller uh, taking it to both Batum and Kelly Oubre. Now, Batum is the, the tougher job because Batum can actually defend. Kelly Oubre was just olaying him, uh, but he was owning him. I mean, he drives mm-hmm. on him for an easy two. He had the, the hook shot over Batum. Uh, I think that was the first bucket of the third quarter. And then he hit two straight in the back half of that quarter against Oubre. Um, Took that. I mean, his decisiveness is so amazing to me. There was a particular play uh, side DHO with Cody Martin. And as soon as that ball hits his hands, boom, up, three, in. I mean, it's just, there's just no hesitation. He's seeing things sort of step ahead and it's it's beautiful. I love it in a in a in a season that has been a sea of uh, disappointment. He has been just an absolute lifeboat.
But I think when you go with his decisiveness, when you talk about that, it, it's it's hand in hand with his intelligence. When you're decisive, it's because you know what to do or more right. often than not. Right. Like, yeah, you can be decisive and just make the wrong move every time. I guess I'm not giving enough light to that because then you could just turn it over constantly and he'll have his turnover problems. Everybody will. But it, it's because of the decisiveness of making the right play something that we saw very present in summer league when he was playing with a pretty bad roster that did not give them a point guard. And he had the basketball in his hands a ton, but he's the one that, all right, there's a body in front of me. Let me kick it out to the guy elsewhere on the perimeter and see what he can do. I'll go relocate now that you're playing with better players. Yes, I know it's the Charlotte Hornets. They've not been very good, but compared to summer league, now that you're playing with better players, he's playing better. So the decisiveness, the intelligence has been there constantly and the lack of fear, which, yeah, that that's just a given. I, I'll i never expect him to be afraid ever. He's always going to be ready. And that, that's just kind of a, uh, a fundamental concrete value that he carries or a concrete skill that he brings to the table. And that's a lot of fun as well. All right, you you want to have a, another thought on Brandon real quickly? No, no thought on Brandon. I did want to ask you about the fourth quarter against Philly. Did you just really quickly? Uh, and I, at the risk of throwing some chum into the uh, shark infested waters of the Clifford haters, did you think in that fourth quarter when they they did take the lead into the fourth quarter, then seven zero Philly run, Hornets were all of a sudden down five. And that was at the eight fifty mark. No mm-hmm. timeout comes, and the starters don't come into the game until it was like 4.30 left. Did you think Clifford aired in waiting and not calling a timeout and then waiting so long to get the starters back in? Yeah, so so it was they, they came in at 4.43. That's when Terry, Brandon, and PJ all entered the game. And what so what kind of break do they have? They left at 8.16, and then they came in at 4.43. So, yeah, I would have liked to have seen them come in a little bit earlier. This is the conundrum for Steve, right? It's trying to find your guys – a little bit of rest time, RTT, rest that thing. So it's them (laughs) trying to do that. And then also, wait, this is Philly though. And we kind of have a chance to win. I do. Is it Brandon Miller? Brandon Miller just came back. He just came back. And so now it's the second night of a back-to-back. Oh, I don't know. I got it. I got it. 35, right? 35 minutes in both of these games. So, so 70 and back-to-back after coming back from injury, I, I hear you. Yes. The answer is yes. I would have liked to have seen him earlier because I'm hungry for a win, a good one. The the only one that we've had. I mean, the Kings is a good win. Miracle after midnight part three and Boston. No. Those are the two best victories that we have. So to answer your question, yes. But I'm like, I get it. I understand why. Well, I, I yeah. OK, you've convinced me. I understand that. But I don't understand not calling a single time out when Philly goes on a 13 to two run to start the fourth quarter. The Hornets are turning it over possession after possession. Rozier missed two free throws. He was one of five from the line, I think, to finish the game. Like There were just so many things that was like I, I could just see so many other coaches calling that time out. I just I didn't understand it. Uh, well, by no, the way, I the mean, last here, not to interrupt, but like here's at the beginning of the fourth fine, quarter, it, it'll be a fine for me. I, it was so, so the guys that started right it was terry brandon pj and then it was jt and nick smith jr before they rotated uh anybody else in you you got a whopping two points from brandon miller at the free throw line in the first four minutes of the fourth quarter like that was you know and then so it was the starters right and then you switch it up and then they bring you some points. And so, yeah, I, I hear you. But it was actually at the beginning of that fourth quarter where some starters just weren't scoring. So it's tough. It was a tough decision. Such is life as a Hornets fan. All right, let's move on. Coming up next on the Lockdown Hornets podcast. Don't go to sleep on the Hornets just yet. We'll preview the Minnesota game. And as we get to see a couple of draft mates go at it, LaMelo Ball, hopefully LaMelo Maybe. Ball is back for Minnesota, right? We don't know for sure. Um, if he does, though, if he does play, then he'll get to play against the number one overall pick from that draft, Anthony Edwards, who looks fantastic. We'll get to that segment in just a moment. Thank you. 
This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another, or maybe you're taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And then you can even switch therapists anytime for no additional charge if you feel the need to do so. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season, it is done, and the playoffs are here, folks. You still have time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, as the stage is set for conference championship weekend. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place a $5 bet, that's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is really easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. You can make a parlay in the Parlay Hub. That's the best way to find the popular parlays. Even more than that. And I'll tell you, when we use FanDuel for Bet the Buzz, which we did, I won. We haven't done it since because I think Doug lost, and I think he's not letting me win. He's not letting me thrive. He's resting that thing as well. But if we were to get in on FanDuel for Minnesota tonight, it would be the biggest spread of the night. 14 and a half. Yep. Timberwolves, 14 and a half point favorites. But we got to believe they competed against Philly. Maybe they can compete against Minnesota as well. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You can also get in on a little NBA action. More Locked On Hornets coming up. All right, before we get to this Minnesota preview, Walker, I've got to do some clean, not really clean up, but just confirmation. The Hornets have not scored 120 points since November 29th in that 129 to 128 victory over the Brooklyn Nets, that boat race that they had. Terry wow. Rozier, monster game. That's the last time that they scored 120 plus. You're right, they got close. Uh, 119 and a loss to the Suns, and okay, 119 in that victory against the Celtics. Okay, here's another neato stat for you from Hornets PR. With three assists tonight, Ish Smith would finish with five assists. With three assists tonight, Ish Smith became the seventh undrafted player in NBA history to record 3,000 career assists per stat head. He joins Daryl Armstrong, J.J. Barea, Jose Calderon, Avery Johnson, John Starks, and David Wesley. Oh, yeah. David Hornets Wesley. Legend. Yeah, I, he is. He is absolutely a Hornets legend. Daryl Armstrong great? went to my high school, by the way, Ashbrook. Go green shout life. Out to, shout out to Fayetteville State, sixth man of the year, Daryl Armstrong. Love That's me right. some Daryl Armstrong. One other NBA legend went to Ashbrook High School. Do you know who he is? Yeah, we've done this before. Okay. <laughs> then say it. <laughs> not not everyone Dan listens Dwarby. to every show, Walker. Do I need to teach you how to do this? I know you're a radio professional. On the true. podcast game, you know, p- different people come to the show at different times. Now we're getting to the point, though, where like T-Bone on WFNZ, it's a running joke that he keeps mentioning he and Chris Paul went to the same high school. Now I wonder <laughs> if it's the same thing as Daryl Armstrong. We mentioned Daryl Armstrong on this podcast. I think more than Locked On Magic does. I but, think. But what? True. Answer my question. What's the James other? Worthy. I said okay. James Worthy. I said James Worthy. I said All that. Right. All right. We're bickering. We're bickering. Fruit salad. James Worthy. And <laughs> Armstrong. I did want to say, isn't it crazy the kind of effect that Lamelo has for your team offensively? You said November 29th, right? Or or, uh, or November is the time that they scored 120. The last time that they did. Which right. is ridiculous. I yeah, 120 November 30th, right? 129, 128 against Brooklyn is what you said. And then Lamelo comes back against San Antonio. It's a weak San Antonio team, but it's all that time without Lamelo, they couldn't get to 120. But they were getting there, Doug. I mean, before that, you see how many times they were getting there. And yeah, their defense is terrible, but they were getting there like somewhat regularly. Yeah, yeah it just it, without Lamelo, it's not going to happen. Well, and something we didn't mention in the first segment and recapping the weekend is that LaMelo's crazy athletic reverse layup, despite whatever he was feeling ankle-wise, it didn't hurt his ability to get to 
do this amazing spin move out of a double team into a uh, reverse layup that would be the the clutchiest of clutch buckets in that San Antonio game. And so not only does you know LaMelo mean more points, it means more points at the right time. He's been one of, he and Terry, have been two of the most clutch players this season, highest volume and highest effective scorers in the fourth quarter of this season, and they sorely missed it against Philly. I mean, I think, yeah, you could look at that game and look yeah. at that execution and how poor it was in the fourth quarter and ask yourself, man, if LaMelo had been playing, boy, they, they might have won that game against Philly. Well, again, he just makes everything easier for everyone. I, I mean, I, I think here we are talking about PJ's offensive struggles all year long. I, you talk about a game that it is, I don't want to say dependent, but pretty close to it on LaMelo just being out there. You know, now that he's playing with the starters again, he had a good game against San Antonio. Everybody did. But when LaMelo's out there, I mean, PJ, he's going to play a lot better. And so are so is Miles Bridges. Remember the stats coming in without LaMelo, Miles was struggling a lot. We can have another Miles conversation um, maybe a little bit later on in the week. Did you want to hit some notes on Minnesota preview? I, I was going to freestyle a little bit, but if, if you wanted to hit a couple of notes on Minnesota preview, then you can share what we would find on Hornets uh, box score, every Hornets box score dot com. Oh, look, this is a great Minnesota team right now. Yeah. Uh, and the the Rudy Gobert situation seems to be working out just fine for them. Uh, they're figuring all that out. Cat's playing elite. Um, I'm sure Minnesota fans are happy that they've stuck with him. And then, But the biggest story is Anthony Edwards is playing on another level right now. And I'm sure a lot of Hornets fans are frustrated with the fact that LaMelo a few games ago went off backboard for a runner. <laughs> yeah. Right. People, and nobody tweeted the it. Credit. Yeah. <laughs> there were no eye emojis from LeBron James. There were no sports center. Uh, there's no sports center love. There was no ESPN mm -hmm. tweet about it. And then Anthony Edwards does an off the backboard, very similar place that LaMelo took off from. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Anthony Edwards yammed that thing. He didn't rest that thing. He yammed that thing. He, 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 yeah, he YT, he YTT'd it. He did. Yeah, and look, man. Yeah, he's getting he's getting some MJ whispers. No one wants to say the name. They're all doing the thing. It's like you know who he looks like. You know who he looks like. You know who he looks like. Mm -mm. But they mm -mm. don't want to say the name. But he is. Yeah, I mean, he's playing on another level. So it would be. I think if Lamelo is feeling better, good enough to play. Um, it's going to be exciting to see these two. And, you know, Anthony Edwards, I don't know if you agree with this, Walker. Anthony Edwards feels like the kind of guy that will go into this game thinking, oh, the Hornets the Hornets didn't take me, so I'm going to show them. And it's like, Anthony, the Hornets had – they couldn't. They probably would have had they had the number one overall pick. But they didn't. They were three. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. I'm going to go after them. Anthony Edwards is this weird blend of honesty and also – crazy competitiveness I, I actually it's funny because you bring that up I think he remembers the true stuff like he talked about that story where Steve Kerr is running through a drill and Steve Kerr talks to Anthony Edwards afterwards and said you didn't run hard enough and this was during the pre-draft uh process said you didn't work out hard enough I, I'd be honest if I, I think maybe it was something to the tune of if we had the pick we wouldn't take you because you didn't work hard enough <laughs> <laughs> and that stuck that stuck with Anthony Edwards. But he also it was coming from a place of that changed the way I worked out. It was not like this bitter. Oh, you didn't take right. me. You doubted me. It was very weird. It's, it's a nice blend. It's a very weird blend, unique blend of honesty and competitiveness. So here's the freestyle I wanted to go with. It, it okay. involves Minnesota, too. But we can focus more on Mark Williams injury. Maybe tomorrow we don't have a, as much time here, Doug. But mm -hmm. this is a stretch. I would have loved to have seen Mark play because if you go with the last five game stretch or so, including Minnesota, right? That would have included, maybe you can even go the last five, not including Minnesota, San Antonio, but Wimby, Wimby's not really, he would tell you he's not a center at first. He's in playing more center, but really the, the games I would love him to play were Miami, New Orleans, San Antonio, a well, Philadelphia and Minnesota. You're talking about, some tough physical centers in every single one of those contests. Now, it Bam, you know, so Bam gives you a different look. Valanchunas gets you a different look. And then you're going against Joel Embiid and the renaissance of Rudy Gobert as the clear-cut favorite to win defensive player of the year. I just, that that's what you want, right? 
even understanding where we are in the season, you want Mark Williams to get those tests against the best centers in the league where if Valanciunas isn't, you know, a top five center in the NBA, but still a load to deal with a, a really good basketball player. And he's missing out on that. And that's frustrating mm-hmm. as a second year player. You, you can't mess with his back. You got to make sure that he's healthy. Steve Clifford spoke with Kyle Bailey, I believe last week and said, yeah, he's not really close. It's it. It's a little Cody Martiny. And that's an awful place to be like, like Cody, Cody missed a whole year. Okay. We're, we're, I'm not telling you we're there. What I am telling you is that it's a little Cody Martiny when you talk about just the, he's having setbacks and when we ramp him up, he's not ready to go. Right. And that's how it reminds me a little bit of the Martin injury. And I hope that this thing gets fixed quickly because it, it, we'd never get good news. And that's a problem. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about this more tomorrow. But it sounds like they're doing everything they can to avoid surgery. That, that, that does so sound they're true. going to try a, a literally yeah. everything because you do not want to do that this early in the career. Two more things on Minnesota. Uh, I think they're going to win fifty games, and they got Rudy Gobert. So you can uh, check that off on uh, things that I've gotten right over the years. Oh and my this God. is. <laughs> a sneak one. That's a sneak brag. I didn't even see it coming. Usually I know exactly when it's coming. <laughs> That's right. Uh, final thing. This is disgusting, okay? They've had three bench players, Kyle Anderson, Nas Reed, and uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker all play 42 games so far. I'm pretty sure that's every single game for them. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley, and Anthony Edwards. Well, Cat, uh, Rudy, and Mike play, have played 41. Anthony Edwards has played 39. Jaden McDaniels has played 32. That's disgusting. Mm-hmm. And I want it, and I'm jealous of it. I'm sure I'm jealous of it, Fruit too. Fruit salad, yummy, yummy. That'll do it. We'll, we'll end on that. That'll do it for Locked On Hornets. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast, and that includes YouTube. Go check us out there. Go check out Doug on his Substack, stack, everyhornetsboxscore.com. Listen to me on the radio, WFNZ, every weekday from 12 to 3 p.m. 92.7 FM. Have a great rest of your day. We'll be back with you tomorrow to recap the game against Minnesota. 